welcome back guys. In today's class, we'll be looking at multiplication of polynomials. In the last classes, we talked about addition and subtraction. That was after we talked about the introduction to polynomials, we talked about addition and subtraction, how we can work on them. And then if you looked at it, if you followed us closely in the last class, you realized that was, we talked about how we can add and subtract polynomials. And then the processes we involved in, the processes we used to actually derive our answers, they're actually basic processes that we already know from numbers and numeration. So it is only based on the coefficients, I mean the variable that we're actually working on. So the same thing, the same almost goes for multiplication, but then it has its own procedure also. So let's so just join me as we actually go through this together. Now we have an example here. We are told that if f1, that is they are giving us functions already, anytime we see something like this, we see f1 and we see f2 or f3, they're just telling us that was we have functions of f of which f1 is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 3. Then we have f2 to be 2x plus 5. And then we have f3 to be 2x cubed plus 6x squared minus x plus 4. Then we are asked to evaluate remember if we go 1, f1 times f3. Remember if we go 2, we are asked to evaluate 3 times f2 times f3. So what are we doing here? The very first thing we do, which we already know, is to actually state out our parameters in the sense that we'll Bring out all the functions or the, the functions, the polynomials that we're actually going to be using. Here. So we have x2, x squared plus 2x minus 3. For f2, we have 2x plus 5. For f3, 2x cubed plus 6x squared minus x plus 4. So since we're going to be doing this, my remark, we go one now. I'm looking for f1 times f3. So this is basically what I want to get. So in order to get this, all I need to do is actually bring out my f1 function, which is x squared plus 2x minus 3 times, times, I have 2x cubed plus 6x squared minus x plus 4. So multiplying this, I can easily get out. If, now, how do I multiply polynomials? The very first way to multiply polynomials is you take the first entity you have here, you take the first entity you have here, and then you use it to multiply each and every one of them in the second bracket. Each and every one of them. Each and every one of them in the second bracket. So you take the first one here, you need to multiply this one, this one, this one, and this one. So after you are done with that, you go to the next one. You can apply this one, this one, this one, and this one. Once you're done with this one, then you move to the last one. You can apply each of them. So you have multiplied each of them with each of them. With all of them, rather. So what do you do here? So that's what we are going to be going, doing here. So we have x squared. So how do you multiply here? We have x squared times 2x cubed. We have 2x to the power 5. From our knowledge of indices, we we'll go to the next one. We have x squared times 6x squared. We have 6x raised to the power 4. We go to the next one. x squared times minus x. We have minus x cubed. The next one. x squared times 4. We have plus 4x squared. Now, we are done with this. We go to the next one. 2x. 2x times 2x cubed. We have 4x cubed. 2x times 6x squared. We have 12x squared. We have 12x cubed, brother. Remember, we had 2x times 2x cubed. So x times x is x raised to the power 4. 2x times 6x squared, we have 2 x raised to the power 3. 2x times minus x, that's minus 2x squared. Then we have 2x times 4, we have plus 8x. Then we go to the next one. So we have done for each of them, we apply each of the four, four, each of the four ones in the second bracket. And then we go to the last one now. Minus 3 times 2x cubed, we have minus 6 x cubed. Minus 3 times 6 x squared, we have minus 18 x squared. Minus 3 times minus x gives us plus 3 x. And then we have minus 3 times plus 4, giving us minus 12. Since we have this, I can now very easily collect my like terms and then simplify. So the first thing I'm going to be doing here, According to the power, I rearrange them to actually group them in like terms. So the first, the highest power I have here is x to the power 5. I have 
2 x raised to power 5. What is the next power, the next highest power I have here? I have 6 x raised to power 4. Then I look for any other one that has x raised to power 4 and then bring it to it. Bring it towards it. Okay, I have 4 x raised to power 4. So that is the only one I have. Plus 4 x raised to power 4. Then I move to the next power, which is 3. That is in, this, in descending um, order of the power. So the next one is x raised to power 3. I have minus x raised to power 3. Ne any other one with x raised to power 3? Okay, I have this. I have plus 12 x raised to power 3. Any other one? Okay, then we have this also. Minus 6 x raised to power 3. Moving on, I go to the next power, which is x raised to power 2. I have plus 4 x raised to power 2. The next one. I have minus 2 x raised to power 2. Next one, I have minus 18 x raised to power 2. I'm done with the x raised to power 2s. Then I move to the, to the variables with power of 1. So the first one I have here is 8x. So that's plus 8x plus 3x. So that one there is just a power that can as well not be written. And as well not be written. So it just means that was, one time you see a variable with no power, it just means the power there is 1. So 8x plus 3x, and then we move to the to the constant value we have there, that is the one without any variable, that is without any unknown beside it, which is 12. And that, I think that is the only constant we have here. We write it there. And now we can add, that is, we can add or subtract, as the case may be, based on their powers. So this one, 2x so plus 5 does not have any member, any family member here. So we just write it alone. We move to the next one. We have 6x raised to the power 4 plus 4x raised to the power 4. That is 10x raised to the power 4. Move to the next one. The next one we have minus x cubed plus 12x cubed minus 6x cubed. So this is more or less minus 1 plus 12 minus 6. So minus 1 plus 12, that gives us 11. 11 minus 6, that gives us 5. So we have plus 5x cubed. Then I go to the next one again, x squared. I have plus 4, minus 2, minus 18. So 4 minus 2 give, giving us 2. 2 minus 18 giving us minus 16. So I have minus 16 x squared. Moving on, I have 8x plus 3x giving me 11x. And the last one here giving me minus 12. So this is the value this is the answer i get after all my troubles so you see it's a very simple process and then it just takes a little concentration at least to actually get what you're doing so that is that for that we have room we got two here so looking at room we got two we'll be looking at room we got two in the next class so just um following this process you can actually try it out on your own and then in the next class you see how whether you're correct and then you know where your mistakes are, are and then you can work on it.